What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Healness across all social media platforms. This is the first time seeing my face or hearing my lovely voice. I am a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, like myself, five years strong, and also validate the victims, survivors, and thrivers of said disorder, said toxic people, said toxic traits. Today's episode is going to be about how do narcissists feel when you finally decide to leave, when you finally decide to walk away, when you finally decide that picking you is what you want to do. So before we hop into today's episode, y'all, please just hit that subscribe button. I right, this, this is me. This is me feeling like I don't want you to leave. This is how narcissists feel. <laughs> hit the subscribe button, y'all, so you don't you don't miss out on any videos and updates and some new things that I have coming out here pretty soon. So yeah, go ahead and hit that button and let's get let's get into it. So how do narcissists feel? How how I know I know a lot of people will just have the the other the just kind of the black and white thinking that narcissists don't feel pain or hurt when you walk away. Like they already have a new supply lined up most times, so they don't care at all. Yeah, you know, and this is not me speaking for every single narcissist because I can't do that. I know I can't do that, but what I can do is just give you an honest perspective from my perspective. When people have walked away. From me, I, I consider it walking away, but you you are not walking away, y'all. You are walking towards a goal. You're not walking away from the narcissist. It's okay to choose you. But when people have left my life, when I, ha I haven't been prepared for them to leave, it hurts. It sucks. It breaks you down, y'all. You do. So I'm not, again, again y'all, do not take this. If you're looking for a sign to go back to your narcissistic partner or give them another chance, this is not it. Just because I say a narcissist hurts when you decide to walk away does not mean that you should take them back. Well, I don't want to leave them in pain, Lee. No, you're not, you, yo, they're, they're hurt. The, the reason you're walking away most times is because they put you through some pain. They put you through hurt. You see what I'm saying? You're, you're leaving them because they put you through some stuff. They hurt you. They, you know, they, they violated the terms and conditions of your relationship. That's why you decided to go to leave this relationship space. That's why you decided to pick you. That's why you decided to choose you. That's why you decided to choose freedom and happiness over these circumstances. But a lot of times that narcissistic person is going to act like they, they never saw this coming. They never saw, they would never have guessed that you would leave them. Like, but when you finally decide to leave and you are, you go no contact, you cut off contact, you, you relinquish, you, know, you change the access code to your life because that's what you have to do. You have to change the access code to your life. Once you do that and they realize you're gone, they, a lot of them do hurt y'all. A lot of them go through hurt, pain. They, some of them become obsessive. I'm gonna go through the stages, but a lot of times they just, you know, it's kind of like the stages of grief. Like the, they go into denial. Like, no, you're not leaving. They not. This person's really not gone. Like they, we've broken up before plenty of times. You know, you say that we we um, we've broken up plenty of times. Uh, so this is just one of those things right here. It happened. You know, it happens all the time and stuff like that. It, you know, it, it this this is gonna keep happening. They go through like it's, it's just denial, like shock and denial. They're just like you know, it's just like no, this is not this is not how it's gonna go. You know. Then, and then once they realize that you are actually gone, here comes the disbelief. They go into disbelief that I can't believe you did this. They start to play, you know, they start to place the, the blame game. They start pointing the finger at you and being super angry at you and accusing you that they, um, that you never loved them, that you never cared about them. How could you leave them like this? Everybody else in my life has abandoned me. How dare you? They go through that pain. They, they do feel, they feel it. They do. And this is like, again, some of them, like, do they have new supply lined up? Yeah, some of them do have new supply lined up, but just because they move on doesn't mean all of the feelings that they have for you disappear. You know what I mean? It just doesn't work that way. I've moved on before, and I've still cared about exes before. Like, full, damn near fully still. I've started new relationships before and been loved by the person, and I'm still thinking about the old person, like, still missing the old person. Like, I've done that before, y'all. That's why I know that some narcissists throw themselves head first into the new relationship because they want to get past and get over the feelings of the old relationship, but it doesn't work that way. They haven't processed it, you know? So there's some of them who, even if they have left you and have a new supply lined up or they were so sad when I left, but then two weeks later they moved them with somebody else. Yeah. They're doing that because they're hurting. 
And I'm not saying like again, y'all, I'm not saying this to make you feel bad and go back to that person. Do not do that. That's not me saying this. This is my saying, like, oh, I was looking for a sign. This is not the sign you're looking for. This ain't it. This ain't this ain't it. Don't look at this, don't look at the video like, oh, Lee said, no, Lee didn't. Lee said, don't do it. Don't misconstrue my words. Don't misinterpret my shit. I'm saying Lee said, do not do it. That's what I said. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know what I mean? But then, like I said, then, then, then after, they, after they find out you're really gone, the blame is suppressed, here comes the confusion, guilt, and then anger, anger. They get confused. They try to figure out, I don't know why you did it. I don't know why you decided to left. You know, I, I don't know why you decided to do it. I don't know why you do it. And then they make you feel bad. And then if they're making you feel bad, it doesn't work. Here comes the anger, y'all. They kick in the anger. They kick anger in the high gear. They become mad as hell. They could become up irate and obsessive and things like that. They could absolutely do that. You know what I mean? But the whole time they become upright, they, the whole time that they're becoming irate and obsessive, they're thinking of a backup plan. They're trying to get a backup plan in order in case they don't have one, in case you don't come back. Because like, damn, what if they don't come back? I have to have a backup plan. So not only could they be being become, becoming obsessive with you or reaching out to you and trying to contact you on a consistent basis, uh, pop up at your job, pop it up at your house, you know, writing you letters, calling you consistently, doing all kinds of craziness. Not only can and will they do that type of stuff right there, sometimes they'll be building a new supply. They'll be in a whole new relationship or trying to build something new with somebody else. They'll do that too, y'all. Just like I said, a lot of narcissists, yeah, they we know shame, but we try to avoid it. So we just try to rationalize it within ourselves, like I'm moving on because they left me, but I'm not gonna leave, I'm not gonna leave them. They'll try to, you know, they'll do whatever, sometimes they'll do whatever it takes, they'll say whatever it takes to get you back into their life. You know, like I said, they can become obsessive and then the anger. And like I said, when they become, when they, when they, when they try to make you feel guilty and that doesn't work, they, switch, they shift to the anger. And angry narcissistic people, when you leave, they could become, like I said, become obsessive, but they could also become really dangerous. And that's why I tell people, if you decide to leave, you don't always have to tell this person that you're leaving because they, if they feel like their world is getting turned upside down, or they feel like you're gonna, you're gonna go out here and find somebody else, or you're gonna go out here and be with somebody else, their damn world can be turned upside down and they can lose their goddamn minds. They can go belligerent, they can lose their minds, they can just be like, oh no, I, can, I didn't know this was gonna happen. Blah, 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 boo, 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 beep, beep, beep. They can just absolutely try to blame you and make you feel a certain type of way about the situation and what is actually going on. That absolutely can be a truth to it right there. They go just telling you, just because you're dealing with a narcissistic person that is you that you're trying to you that you're dealing with in this on this level, like they because they can send you out of here. Right? I mean, y'all know what I mean when I send you out of here, I send you straight to heaven. Do not pass go, straight past the pearly gates. Don't do that. Like I said, you don't have to tell them, y'all, because narcissistic people, yeah, could they become super depressed after you leave? Yeah, you know. I, you know, that's why I'm so glad I got a psyche valve because I have narcissistic personality disorder, general anxiety, uh, and I have depression as well. Yeah, I have general anxiety and depression as well. I have depression, signs and symptoms of depression. So narcissists can absolutely become depressed after you leave. But, and, and, and some of them, y'all, will try to make you feel bad about their depression. I'm so depressed. I'm going to unalive myself. If you hear somebody say that, y'all, because then here comes the guilt and the emotional manipulation. If you hear them say that, don't go try to save their life. Call the unaliving hotline, the, the slow slide hotline, call it and report, do a wellness check. Do something like that. Do not wellness check with yourself. You don't need to be present to do a wellness check. You don't need to do that. You don't need to be there. You don't need to pop up. You don't need to check in on them like that. Your physical presence is not necessary because again, if they think about it like this, y'all, let's just say they do want to unalive themselves and you go pop up to stop them. What's stopping them from taking you out of here too? You don't change their mind, you just give them another target. So they're gonna take you out of here, your family and friends are gonna miss you, your life completely stops abruptly, and then they take themselves out. Don't do that, y'all. I know you care about people, I know your empathy is high, I know you have a lot of compassion. Have enough compassion and empathy for yourself, and sympathy for yourself as well, to go out here and just call, do a wellness check because y'all, they can become very dangerous because like they feel like their world, like they could absolutely feel like their world is over. There, there's some, there could be some truth to when they're saying that. They, there could be some, when, they, when they're yelling and crying and begging or whatever for you to come back and they're like, my world is over. I can't live without you. I don't want to move on without you. I can't do it. They could absolutely mean that, y'all. But guess what else that means? It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to change. 
That just means that they don't feel like they can live without you. They don't want to be in this. They don't want to be in a new relationship. They just want to be with you. They could absolutely mean that stuff, but that doesn't mean they're going to treat you better for a consistent period of time. Just because they say that stuff doesn't mean that they're going to treat you better. Doesn't mean that they're going to do you better. Doesn't mean that they're. That doesn't mean that they're going to be better for you. It just means that they feel like I can't live without you. So I don't want to be here anymore. That's what. just what that means, y'all. This is just what that means. You know what I mean? They just get into these spaces where, like, if you finally decide to leave, that they might lose they they might lose their minds. They really might. But if they lose their minds, y'all, be prepared to call the police. Be prepared to defend yourself and protect your peace and protect yourself. If you have kids with this type of person, expect for the kids to be used as manip- uh, as pawns or leverage or tools of manipulation, tools to hurt you. They just absolutely can, y'all. And just I hate that the kids get involved in these situations. The kids be like. They become more targets to it. I really, really do hate that, y'all. If I have empathy for anybody, it's for it's for kids because kids can't defend themselves. Kids can't kids don't get to pick their parents. It just sucks. It really, really does suck, y'all. So narcissistic people, when you leave them, they could go through the seven to twelve stages of grief. They'll try to bargain with you, beg you to come back. The like I said depression kicks in and then like they, they don't want to be alone. So they try to move on to somebody else while also trying to get you back. Just because they move on to somebody else doesn't mean that they will leave you alone. There's truth to that right there, y'all. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to ask again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any updates, y'all. Got some new stuff coming out soon. Of course, like and subscribe for more. And always, as always, Mr. Hunters is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video, y'all. I'm I am truly eternally grateful for every single one of y'all that support the channel in any way, shape, or form. If you haven't already, make sure you that you subscribe to the channel so that we can reach more people to help more people. The self love brand is available. I'm strong. I love me. It's a self love brand. The self love journal is available on Amazon as well to help you rebuild that self love and identity. You know, doing the toxic relationship. Also, look at the joining the channel memberships to get more about behind the scenes perks and things like that y'all thank you so much for your support thank you thank you thank you